if anybody was in Vegas, uh, you might have seen me presenting on this one. I am going to do my absolute best to fly through this while still giving you the best representation of it. Uh, typically, if I do a demonstration, it takes an hour, but we don't have that much time. So I'm going to hit all of the uh, kind of big points behind it with the summer, uh, summary of the dashboards. And then hopefully it leads enough time to go over some questions about anything that we went over earlier or uh, focus on route stats itself. So in order to start using route stats, uh, you're going to have to supply some documents at this point, which uh, we will be integrating ground cloud data, uh, hopefully sooner than later. It's tricky to map everything correctly to drivers and routes, but it's something we're working on currently diligently, and it's going to make the product even better. But in order to get documents into it, what you're going to do is go into your My Biz account. You're going to select your settlement sheet that's on the uh, home page. It's also referred to as the charge statement. You're going to download the PDF version. You're going to then go into the DSW uh, web portal. Click on weekly service worksheet at the top. Make sure the same week ending date is the uh, matching your settlement sheet. Download the Excel version of that. Once you've downloaded those, you come in, click upload file. You uh, choose file. Your very first time, you need to upload the PDF first, hit submit. The next time you're able to uh, do the Excel, submit. After your initial upload, you can then do a mass upload and mixing the sheet. So you could put in 20 PDFs and 20 Excel sheets, hit submit. The very first time we need to reference things on your charge statement, map it to your ground cloud account so it's associated correctly. And then going forward, since we have all of it mapped uh, correctly and it's associated, you can put any historical data that you want uh, as long as you were still an ISP. So for my family's company, we were able to go back to, I think, August of 2019. I have data in my account. But before that, it's when we still had the PSAs and you were paid on a per route basis instead of uh, what the company did as a whole. So the parser that reads all of the PDFs is only set up for the ISP version of the settlement sheet. Uh, after you've uploaded, uh, there's a refresh rate right now that we're constantly working on getting lower and lower. It used to run every 15 minutes uh, and then we'd read the database. We're working on getting it down to five. And then after that, we're working on getting it to refresh on everybody's individual upload. That's the end goal. I don't have a timetable for that. So don't, uh, Hold me to the fire, but that's our roadmap of our goals for it. But it, uh, if you guys had started using it even a month ago, you should be seeing that the refresh is much, much quicker than it was. And this has just been getting better. So once it's uploaded, you're able to make sure all of your files were uploaded. So with this being a demo account, we haven't updated it in a while. Uh, probably should now that we're doing these demos. You can see here the last date is July 8th. So I know now I need to go back in and upload August and September. I'm able to then go down and see, all right, I have route data for these days, stops, packages, and miles. The reason miles is here is if I keep scrolling back, uh, actually, what I need to do is change the date range because the default is for 120 days. When you see this updated after I uh, click on this year, if I keep scrolling, the uh, various accounts to give you the best representation of route stats, the various accounts did not have miles data starting in February. The issue here, which is why it's so important us for, uh, for us to get the ground cloud data in, after six weeks, FedEx purges the miles data from the WSWs. So if you were to download your WSWs today, you will not get miles data if it was longer than six weeks ago, which is unfortunate, but you're still able to upload all of your uh, settlement sheets or charge statements, and you'll have all your financial data. You just won't see the metrics that uh, have miles uh, to it. So like miles per route is the number one thing that people typically think of. Uh, to speed up a little bit to show you how to uh, make sure your data is inputted, 
overview page. I've always described this as this is how you're going to explain what you do to your friends, family. Uh, if you're at an expo, this is how you're going to tell people, well, this is how many routes I dispatch, average routes, average amount of stops my company gets, average amount of stops that my trucks do. It's a really good representation of just what you do. You're able to, and then I'll touch on this, probably not mention it much going forward. You're able to segment the different entities that you run if you have more than one. If you're in more than one terminal, you can filter it out. Or if you want to look at a specific driver on this page, you can as well. And then you can just take that away and get back to everything else. These filters function the same throughout all of the dashboards. So there's really good continuity between it. Not a big learning curve. Uh, they interact almost the same on every single page. Comparison is uh, my favorite, my brainchild. Uh, you can do anything that you can think of with this one. So on the left-hand side, if you wanted to compare uh, April, May to June and July, well, to July 8th, because that's where my data ended, you're able to do that. If you uploaded data for the past three years, you could compare peak of 2020 to peak to 2021. If you wanted to plan for your upcoming peak, you could look at, uh, say, September, October versus November, December and see what your growth rate was. So then this coming year, you could look at September and October and make a projection based upon the percentage of growth of how many routes do I need to add or do I need to add any based upon what the volume was before peak last year. Uh, manager to manager. If somebody was working last week, he's on vacation, you want to see how the person stepped in and handled it. You could do the left and right comparison of last week to two weeks ago. It is the only limitation to it is what your mind can think of. And throughout the dashboard, everything is side by side for you to be able to compare very easily. We have a bunch of various charts. So we have revenue data per day of the week. We have stop mix, package mix. Uh, the revenue is the average revenue per that day and the average revenue per route. And then dispatch is how many routes, how many stops uh, are going into your business packages, total miles, route averages. And then within these, you can look at specific uh, metrics. And throughout the dashboard, if you see this chart, you're able to drill into these averages and see all of the dates that went into generating these numbers. So if you click on it, click this blue arrow to see more of the dates, you can see all of those Saturdays that generated that average, and then you can get back to it. So all of these allow you to look at your business and an easy to way view that you've probably discussed before, but not an easy way to quantify it. And then all of these are based upon each other, but break down the views so it's simpler to view for you. So if I want to look at March, all I did was click on March. You can see it's the same charts, but now it's a bigger screen, easier to look at. You can really hone in on uh, whatever trend you want to look at for that day of the week. You can, same thing with the filters. You can look at a specific business, driver, volume analysis. So very similar uh, to all the other ones of breaking it down per day of the week. So you can help make your route plan. But now we show you the volume mix by stop and by package. And then you can correlate that to how it affects your route averages for those days of the week. Uh, this one's a really good one. It's going to help you identify what day of the week am I not getting enough work out of my drivers. So these gauges show you this is the average amount of time drivers are on the road. And if you're scheduling for a five-day work week to where they're supposed to be working uh, as a shift, eight hours a day, but they're only on the road for five, and then you look at your payroll report and you see that they're working like 30 to 35 hours you know you should probably jump up their stop count so you get more work out of them, decrease the number of routes, and then therefore decrease your payroll, decrease your maintenance, decrease your fuel, and increase your revenue per route. So that's where the major cost savings come in. And this is one of the best dashboards to see it, whereas you can still get it in a, a lot of other dashboards and drill into the data. This one on a service level, not needing to interact very much, uh, can jump out to you very easily. We have three different team ones. We have uh, team is just essentially all of your employees. 
We have the efficiency, the financial, and the workload efficiency. We're mapping their stops per hour versus their stops per mile, which is their density. So how close are their stops together? So if I wanted to look at who is my fastest driver, how dense are their stops? So how close together are they versus what about my quote unquote least efficient, but we all know there's reasons for it. These could be managers. They could be on rural routes. So we're just letting you identify the drivers. We're not trying to tell you that this person's terrible because you know your drivers better than I do. There could be a very good reason for it. And then if you want to analyze in between, you don't necessarily have to use this filter. You can click and drag just like I did. Take that filter off and you're back at it. So you can piece it all together however you want. And then uh, these will update however you filter it out, which all of these charts are uh, set up the same. So same thing here, go back to March so I can get some data in there. I wanna filter it out, same thing, updates accordingly. And I left these notes on all the dashboards because same thing. I'm not gonna be here to tell you that this person is uh, losing you money because it might be a manager that saves you a lot of time and effort and they had to run some stops this week. So they popped up and it looks like they don't generate very much revenue per route, but that's why it's a good thing. You can filter that out and start looking at your data in a different perspective. And then same thing for workload. We map the uh, hours, average hours on road, the average stops per route. And then we made sure to include packages per route because I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this person isn't getting enough work in the day if they're only doing 19 and a half stops per route when they're doing almost a thousand packages. So again, we're never gonna tell you that, hey, this person, you need to get more stops in their truck because I was dumb and left out another metric. We just want you to be able to see all of your uh, metrics and help analyze your business in the way that you know your business better than I do. So. Same thing here. If it was just going by stops, they're literally doing a thousand packages every time they go out. They're working eight hours a day. If we were trying to show you the stops per hour, they're going to be super low. 34 stops in eight hours. It looks like they're super inefficient. But in reality, they're saving a bunch of room in all the trucks. They're probably doing pickups. Like I said, however you piece together your company and structured it, there's probably a reason for it. And there's something that the numbers can't tell me. So we will not be saying this person's terrible, change how the, they operate. And then driver profile is very similar, but we just cleaned it up and made it a little bit more obvious for some of the metrics. Go in, pick a single driver, and you can see how they affect your business. And then the opportunities one uh, is also there to help you see okay, where can I make some improvements? So again, we're not gonna say on Saturdays, you have to change this on Sundays, you have to change this because we don't know everything that goes into that specific day, but we can help draw attention to it to help you think of it in a different manner. So if I wanna look at, we'll do one of the businesses, it looks like Sunday's the one of the least profitable, and it's not on the road as long as compared to the other ones. So if we're trying to aim for seven and a half hours on road time, it looks like we're a little bit low of that. How does that affect our routes per day? How does it affect uh, stops, packages, and miles per day? So I selected the last six months. If I come down here, select the last six months, put in a the correct correlating day, and if I have a goal of eight, it's gonna show me what would happen if I was able to get my on-road hours up to eight. Well, it looks like I could eliminate a route, increase my revenue per route, and these are the stops, packaging, and miles per route. And the last thing with route stats is we clearly hone on revenue per route, but we know this tool has a lot of purposes for your managers as well. In the route stats ops page, we keep every single dashboard the exact same minus any revenue data. So on every single dashboard, we strip the revenue data out. There's absolutely no way it's going to be visible. It's 
not even a part of the platform on this page. So if you want to look at it with your manager looking over your shoulder, you can do that and you will be able to navigate the page just as easily as uh, before because there's no learning curve. It's the same exact charts minus the revenue data that you were used to looking at. And to do that, you just want to go into your fleet managers. We'll select me and you'll click edit and update their personnel roles. So if you allow them to see the uh, financial data, you'll give them the managers. If you don't want them to see it, do not check this one and you can give them strictly the operations managers and they will only see this tab on their uh, login portal. Yeah.